Next question is from Danny Burdick. How does poor gut health affect the metabolism and your ability to efficiently lose body fat? Okay, so I'm going to change the question just so that the answer becomes more obvious, but then we'll get more specific to this particular question. So the question now is, how does poor health affect metabolism and your ability to lose body fat, right? If you're unhealthy, your body isn't going to adapt as well to anything. It's mm -hmm. going to want to hold on to body fat because body fat is an insurance policy, right? If you have stored body fat on your body, that is just in case something goes wrong, just in case you don't have enough food, just in case you get sick, right? You've got all the stored energy. By the way, our body does store glycogen in our liver and some in our muscles, but it pale, even lean ripped athletes have far more energy stored as body fat than they do as glycogen. So it's this wonderful insurance policy. So if you don't feel good, if, you're, if your metabolism, I mean, excuse me, if your health is poor, your body is going to want to store body fat. It's also going to want to not build energy expensive muscle, right? So if you have poor health, you're not going to build as much muscle. So now let's talk more specifically about the gut. Although that falls under this category, it's, there's some pretty interesting specifics when it comes to gut health. Number one, nutrient deficiencies become much more prominent. So if you have poor gut health, you're not absorbing nutrients. In fact, nutrient deficiencies are quite common, even in people who supplement when they have poor gut health because their body's just not absorbing enough nutrients. Does that affect your hormones and your metabolism? Uh, absolutely. Um, poor gut health also strongly contributes to overall systemic inflammation. So if you're going to work out and get inflamed and have to heal from that, well, now you're even more inflamed and it's going to it's going to take you even longer to recover. This is a big issue that a lot of athletes start to run into later on because we tend to hammer ourselves with food. We tend to hammer ourselves with exercise. Uh, lots of stress on the body can also make the gut more susceptible to having issues. We eat right after we work out, which is often a good idea, but sometimes not a good idea, especially if we worked out really, really, really hard. It can cause gut uh, you know, imbalances. Then we take lots of supplements with you know, artificial sweeteners, which there's debate as to whether or not it's okay for the gut or not. I think that it's probably, I lean more towards it probably not good for the gut. And so then you see all these athletes who've been working out for a long time and they find in their 30s, can't digest food like they used to. All of a sudden, foods that they used to eat now, they can't eat anymore. And then their bodies are just not just not responding like they used to, but like way differently uh, than they used to. So this is a big deal, but so is your overall health. So if you're unhealthy, you can pretty much kiss, uh, you know, burning body fat and building muscle and all that stuff goodbye. It's just not going to happen as much. Well, I think there's an even simpler way to put this. Um, and I think I remember it was, I think it was Paul Check the first time we interviewed him that I really loved the way that uh, he talked about this. And I don't think I'd ever communicated it, uh, it this way before. And it's really this simple. Your body has like 11 major systems in it. And if any of them are off, it affects all of them. They're all connected. They're yeah. all- You're one thing. That's right. And it's it's and the reason why th this is even a question or why there's some um, in somewhat of a misunderstanding around this is because in Western medicine, we we isolate. We take, you know, your, your, yeah, there's uh, a digestive system, the hormone system. Yeah. We're yeah. educated that way around it. Our, our professions are around that. You go see a, a specialist for each one of those. There's, unless you're going to see like a holistic type of doctor, you're not, you're not getting that. You're getting someone who's talking to you about the central nervous system. You're getting somebody who's talking to you about the skeletal system. You're getting somebody that's talking about the digestive system. But the truth is they all, they all work together. And if one of them is not running optimally, it is going to negatively affect all of them. Now, maybe it, ne it negatively affects one system more than the other, but they're all being impacted. And the, your, your body has to prioritize to try and get that running optimal, which if it's prioritizing any of its energy and resources to try and fix that area that's not doing well, the gut in this situation, then it's not going to be able to put as much resources to other systems. It's like looking at it's a that car. Simple. It's like looking at a car and saying, which one of these affects the car's ability to drive? The, the, the pistons, right. the exhaust system, the fuel injection, or the tires, like mm -hmm. all of them. Right. If all, if any one of those are off, yeah, you're or, or which one affects the speed of the car? Yeah, right? they're all going to affect the car, so they're they're all going to have an issue. So if you have poor health anywhere, then it's going to make everything uh, much more challenging. Well, I do think though too, this is one of those overlooked areas, and now it's just starting to get light because of like new science, and you know we're getting more information in terms of like you know how to better 
uh, address like gut health, uh, especially in athletics, like in in what we're consuming and like how that really affects the overall system of the body. And so I think that it's good that it's getting highlighted now. People are asking questions like this uh, because it's it's pointing to that fact that this is also something to to really consider when when you want your body to perform at its best and and to be able to get the kind of results that you're looking for. So if something like this needs to be addressed, you need to look into it. I remember when uh, we started the podcast about six years ago, nobody in the space was talking about gut health. Exactly. I mean, you, you had the very holistic wellness side that talked about it, but nobody in sports performance, fat loss or muscle building was talking about gut health. And I remember we would bring it up. We were kind of the first people in the space to really talk about it quite a bit. And I remember all the messages I was getting from people who were like, Oh crap! This dude, is dude. What, it was mind blowing to me. Yeah. Even like I was, I, I I was never exposed to that information. You know, going through all the certifications and uh, through athletics, and you know, obviously you knew that you wanted to kind of eat better food just because you didn't want to get like fatter. But that was really the the the, the gist of of what kind of information I was. Well, it's again, it goes back to what I was saying that we just we we're not educated that way. We're we're educated in a way that breaks up all the systems. And when you're thinking of like the digestive system, and you're in the business business of building muscle and burning body fat you yeah. just don't think about how much those those are actually connected to each other and you know I, I think that's the mistake we make a lot of times is realizing that and it, I mean even like mental stress will affect all those things there's yeah. so many there's so many things that affect your ability and that's why it's so complex too and not always it's never a simple answer for somebody who's like oh i'm having a hard time losing body fat even though i'm doing all these things it's just it's calories like, in calories out bro yeah no it's way more complex than that totally